so welcome everyone so in the last class we started developing about the atoms structure we tried to see that how does atom is there how does atom look like so we were somewhat successful in our attempt and we still have a lot of things to cover up how we are successful number one success we had is that we are able to explain that okay atom is neutral it has positive charge is a negative charge so no net charge second success that we had is that okay most of the atom is empty so we have a idea of nucleus and also electron is revolving in a circular orbit so we are very close to our actual answer but this is still not our actual answer this is not our atoms look like because if an electron is revolving around a nucleus it should radiate energy and ultimately it should come to the nucleus and collapse everything collapsed sab kuch khatam but now bohar came and rescued this model with a very very different approach and how did bohar came that's also very interesting story but bohar came with this model and there are basically three postulates for this model and this model is very much uh, you can say uh, you can say very much motivated from the quantization rather than motivated from the planet based system रदरफोर्ड का मॉडल प्लैनेट्स से मोटिवेटेड ओके प्लैनेट्स में क्या था कि सन है देर इज अस सो मास इज रिवॉल्विंग अराउंड द सन सो सिमिलरली इलेक्ट्रॉन इज रिवॉल्विंग अराउंड द न्यूक्लियस बट दैट हैज अ प्रॉब्लम बट बोहर न्यू दैट वेन वी गो टू द स्मॉल स्केल लेवल थिंग्स गेट क्वांटाइज समथिंग विल गेट क्वांटाइज वट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस क्वांटाइजेशन समथिंग गेट्स क्वांटाइज मीन्स इफ आई एम अ पर्सन एंड आई एम रनिंग आई कैन रन एट एनी स्पीड i can run at 2 meter per second i can run at 2.11 meter per second i can run at 2.03 meter per second whatever speed i want i can run with that speed i can run my speed can change continuously it's not like that i can only run with one or two or three or four no i can run with any speed continuously so i can have any value of magnetic the value of kinetic energy i can have or value of energy i can have is continuous but when we see the small scale identities or objects and it was very much proved from the planck's law planck gave the gave the model in 1904 itself black body ko explain karte hue planck first bol chuka tha the energy of the radiations emitted have particles which is being quantized having the quantized energy so that that kind of scenario was already there einstein bhi photon ki baat kar chuka tha so bohr had an idea ki something can be quantized in this so what does he quantized he said in hydrogen atoms the quantity which is quantized is angular momentum quantized means that your angular momentum cannot take any value it can only take values in the steps or l1 or l2 or l3 or l4 aapke atom ka angular momentum ya to l1 hoga ya l2 hoga ya l3 hoga ya l4 hoga and so on aisa nahi ki l1 aur l2 ke beech mein jo bhi value hai kuch bhi ho sakta ye possible nahi hai so your angular momentum is quantized in an atom ye this was a postulate of bohr he knew about the quantization and he tried to put the quantization rule quantization rule in reality there was because it was all connected if the angular momentum gets quantized energy will also get quantized if the energy gets quantized radius will also get quantized if the radius get quantized velocity will also get quantized so if you quantize any one thing all other things will also get quantized all other things will also get quantized and that what he actually did for the bohr atom so what did he said what did he said is that an electron in an atom revolves around a nucleus in a circular orbit so you have a nucleus and you have electron aur ye electron jo hai wo nucleus ke around circular orbit mein ghum raha hai kyu ghum raha hai why ghumne ke liye to force chahiye who is giving this force that force is coming from the coulomb force between nucleus and electron kyunki electron and nucleus ke beech mein ek attraction hai because of that force 
इलेक्ट्रॉन इज रिवॉल्विंग अराउंड द न्यूक्लियस इन सर्कुलर ऑर्डर सो बोहर टॉक्स अबाउट द सर्कुलर ऑर्डर बोहर डिड नॉट मैं एनीथिंग अबाउट द लिप्टिकल ऑर्डर ओके सो बोहर टॉक्ड अबाउट द सर्कुलर ऑर्बिट एंड बोहर सेट ओके इलेक्ट्रॉन इज रिवॉल्विंग अराउंड द न्यूक्लियस इन सर्कुलर ऑर्बिट एंड दिस इज हैपनिंग बिकॉज ऑफ द फोर्स बिटवीन न्यूक्लियस एंड द इलेक्ट्रॉन द सेम थिंग रदर फोर्ट सेट बट नाउ ही ब्रिंग द क्वांटाइजेशन सेकेंड रूल इज ऑन द क्वांटाइजेशन he said that out of infinite number of orbits there are many orbits possible you can have any radius right you electron can revolve in this radius electron can revolve in this radius electron can revolve in this radius so many many radiuses are possible but he says out of this infinite number of orbits which are possible it will only re revolve in those orbits in which एंगुलर मोमेंटम इज क्वांटाइज वो उन्हीं ऑर्बिट में घूमेगा जिसमें एंगुलर मोमेंटम की वैल्यू फिक्स है एक क्वांटाइज वैल्यू मान लो इफ ही इफ द इलेक्ट्रॉन इज रिवॉल्विंग एंगुलर मोमेंटम कैन टेक द वैल्यू आइदर एच कट विच इज बेसिकली एच बाई टू बाई और एंगुलर मोमेंटम कैन टेक वैल्यू टू एच बाई टू बाई और एंगुलर मोमेंटम कैन टेक वैल्यू थ्री एच बाई टू बाई टू बाई सो ऑन वो ऐसे किसी ऑर्बिट में घूम ही नहीं सकता जहां पर एंगुलर मोमेंटम की वैल्यू 2.5 पॉइंट एच बाय टू पाए हो या फिर 7.2 पॉइंट टू एच बाय टू पाए हो दिस इज नॉट पॉसिबल ये सब ऑर्बिट पॉसिबल ही नहीं ओनली दोज ऑर्बिट आर पॉसिबल इन विच द एंगुलर मोमेंटम हैज अ वैल्यू एन एच बाय टू पाए एंड एन कैन बी वन टू थ्री फोर सो ऑन दिस एच बाय टू पाई इज ऑल्सो नोन एज एच कट so he can take either value h cut 2 h cut 3 h cut and so on. okay and so on clear so this was what an idea bohr gave the model bohr gave and there's a interesting history behind it that why bohr came up to this i will share you the article also with that okay i will give you an brief talk about it once we are done with all the formulas i will give you some maybe on monday or maybe some time that i will explain you that how bohr came with this line of thinking it's it was a line of thinking he was trying to make different different things quantized bahut alag alag cheeze quantize karne ki koshish pehle first he tried with energy then he tried with angular momentum and so on so ye ye rule ho gaya so now you can clearly see that this is a nucleus and your electron can either be in this orbit 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 it cannot be between these two orbits only some fixed orbits are possible only some or only few orbits are possible sirf aur sirf kuch hi orbits possible hai only few orbits are possible sab orbits possible nahi kaun se orbits possible hai only those orbits are possible in which angular momentum has the value n h cut h cut means h by 2 pi so either angular momentum can be h cut 2 h cut 3 h cut and so on so that was the idea he gave so now we have a very different sort of image about electron in our mind so we now if we close our eyes and we try to imagine that there is a nucleus in middle and now electron is either revolving in this orbit or this or more big Only seven, eight, ten, nine. Like this orbit, this orbit, this or fixed orbits are possible. Discrete orbits are possible. कुछ ही radius की values हैं जो possible हैं. सभी radiuses की value possible नहीं है. ये idea था. तो ये quantization है. This this is not something new. This was this was new according to the atomic spectra. लेकिन ये बहुत new नहीं था. इसी को हम quantum mechanics बोलते हैं. Everything is quantized at the low scale level, at the small scale level. Everything is quantized. So Bohr said angular momentum is quantized. Now we still have to explain that why spectra is there. Atom जो है light को absorb क्यों करता है और atom जो है light को emit क्यों करता है. That we still have to we have to tell. So he said that atom absorbs the radiation when it jumps from lower energy to higher energy orbit. So let's say electron lower energy orbit में था. so electro atom was enjoying atom was peacefully having the fun and he was watching some show and then suddenly you throw a light at him or you hit it that atom 
So now atom will absorb the energy and the electron will go from the lower energy level to the higher energy. And electron will emit the radiation. Similarly, atom will emit energy of radiations emitted or sorry. Atom will emit the radiations when it jumps from the higher energy to the lower energy. But if it was already in the excited state or in the higher energy state and it comes back to the lower energy state, it will in emit the energy. So it is like that. So if the electron is in higher state and it comes back to lower state, it will emit the energy as a result of it. That is, that is why we see the emission state. And if it is in the ground state or in the lower energy state and it takes up some energy, absorbs some energy, then it will go to the higher energy state. Okay. So that were the three postulates of the Bohr. Any doubt in these three postulates? History part is one thing. Other than that, any doubt anyone have? So Orbits yeah. also called stationary states. Yeah, that that I'm coming to now. He, why? How it dissolved the other four states? Uh, excuse me, sir. Yeah. Uh, like in the first postulate, even after knowing that uh, orbiting around in circles, mm -hmm. it accelerate and give out radiation. Even after knowing that, why did he assume it goes in circular of orbit in the first point? First postulate. No, no. Electron in circle ellipse in anything will emit radiation. But he said as long as, yeah, that was a major point that as long as it is in these orbits in which the angular momentum is taking value n h cut, if it is in these orbits, electron will not emit the radiation. Somehow, he don't know, he did not explain why. He said in, that, yeah, yes, yeah, sir. please. Yeah. Like in that orbit, will the electron really go in circular motion like in reality no in reality no okay in we will talk about hydrogen atom then you will see that electron is not even moving sometimes uh, it is sir. not even moving okay probability so, yes sir yeah so then it's all cloud electron cloud kind of thing so in reality we know that that's the best picture but according to this picture that as long as agar to electron jo hai wo in fixed orbits ke andar ghoom raha ye orbit ke andar ye orbit ke andar ye orbit ke andar ye orbit ke andar if it is revolving in these orbits, then it will not emit the radiations. People ask Bohar, why? Why you are saying this? It's a very bold statement you are making. You are basically challenging the electromagnetic theorem, which says that if charge is accelerating, it should emit radiation. And you are saying that only in these orbits, electron will not emit radiation. Baki kisi bhi orbit mein wo emit karega. Baki kisi bhi orbit mein emit karega, but agar wo in fixed orbits mein hoga, to emit nahi karega. So it means agar uska angular momentum h cut, 2 h cut, 3 h cut, 4 h cut and so on. If this is the angular momentum, electron will not emit the radiation. But if electron has any other angular momentum, it will emit the radiation. So un orbits mein wo ho hi nahi sakta because otherwise wo radiation emit karega or finally electron ke saath collapse karega. Okay. So, are there any losses other than the radiation emitted when electron jumps from one orbit to other? Very interesting question. Pair production or some, if, if some pair production or you can say uh, some sort of, you can say double electron emission, ye sab nahi ho hai. so then no. If some other phenomena are not happening, for example, sometimes what happens is inner electron strikes the outer electron out. Because what happens is that inner electron was going to the higher state and in a, in a way, other electron is also in the path. So what happens? Wo usko bahar nikal de. If these things are not happening, then no. Yeah, like laser. So, similar, yeah. Like laser. Yes. So if that is not happening, then no. Okay. Now we are going to come to the very, very important part, which is basically doing the mathematics for this model. So mathematics we will develop and please open your notebooks now because you will be needing them. So now we are going to develop the mathematics of this model and all the formulas that we need. Because H cut has, no, we didn't decide it, uh, that that was a decision of the Bohr actually. Okay. Okay. 
So let's see why we decided to multiply H cut because H cut has the dimensions of angular momentum. H cut itself has a dimension of angular momentum, but I'm not saying that it was done to make sure the dimensions are balanced. Right. I will, I will give the history. I will, I will, I have not given the paper today, but we will talk about history. Okay. Today I'm not, I don't, I'm not prepared with the history today. I have to also go through the history to check that how he came with an idea. Right. Basically, I know that he started with an energy, but that thing didn't work out for him. Then he jumped to, to the angular momentum. But that was very successful. Then when he jumped to the angular momentum, and there were some problems with energy that he was facing. Okay, maybe on Monday we will have 10 minute talk on this. Okay, how he came to an idea. Okay, how he chose angular momentum itself. That's a very good question, actually. How the idea came to his mind, development. Okay, so H cut always remember has the dimensions of angular momentum. It has the same dimensions as angular momentum. So if someone ever asks you, this will be very beneficial. Okay, this is the thing. Now we have to develop. Yeah, please, please. Yeah. Sir, in case some high frequency radiation kisi bhi atom pe dal sakte, atom destroyed ho sakta hai, sir. Atom destroyed. Burn ho gaya na ek You are saying burn, atom burned. So atom burn destroyed, matlab ek prakar se disappear nahi ho sakta. Nahi burn ho gaya, disappear ho ke kaha chala jayega. Burning ho sakti hai, atom can, atom can undergo chemical changes, atom can... Uh, what can happen? Atom will get material gets very much highly heated up. Burning can produce vibration. Karne lagta hai. If you if sometimes if you give high frequency, what happens? Material starts getting vibrate, vibrating. So wo apni jo energy hai na, wo mechanical ways se lose karne okay. Because you are giving very much energy. Ab usko kahin na kahin to us energy ko lose karna hai. To lose karne ke liye wo kya kya kar sakta hai? Wo, wo, wo aag laga sakta hai. Aag lagayega to wo jo bhi energy aap de rahe ho, wo lose ho rahi hai aag ki form mein. या फिर वो वाइब्रेट करने लगेगा वाइब्रेट करने से क्या होगा जो भी एनर्जी आप दे रहे हो वो वाइब्रेशंस की वजह से लूज हो रही है सो ही विल फाइंड सम वे टू लूज दैट एनर्जी को एटम थोड़ी डिस्ट्रक्ट गया कहां पे डिस्ट्रॉय होकर कहां चला गया कहीं तो जाएगा वी कैन नॉट क्रिएट और डिस्ट्रॉय द एनर्जी ओके एनीथिंग एल्स यस सर वन क्वेश्चन या प्लीज किसी दूसरे फॉर्म में या तो वाइब्रेट नहीं करता उस समय सर उस समय अगर वो एनर्जी जो थोड़ी बहुत भी हो डेढ़ इलेक्ट्रॉन वोल्ट भी हो तो ऐसे कितने सारे नॉन रेडिटिव फोटोन निकल गए और नॉन रेडिटिव एनर्जी टेम्परेचर में कन्वर्ट हो रही होगी तो उसमें तो हमें लेजर बेल्ट हो जाना चाहिए इलेवन थाउजेंड सिक्स हंड्रेड टेल्व वर्ल्ड इलेक्ट्रॉन वोल्ट होता है ऐसे कितनी सारी एनर्जी वहाँ पे डिसिपेट हो रही है तो इसका टेम्परेचर को किसका डिफाइन करेंगे कि वहाँ पे इतना टेम्परेचर नहीं होगा नहीं बट इट्स नॉट इम्पोर्टेंट ना नॉन रेडिएटिव जो रेडिएशन दैट शुड ओनली लीड टू द टेम्परेचर इंक्रीज वो और भी मैकेनिकल मींस के साथ उस एनर्जी को लूज कर सकता है वाइब्रेशंस कॉज कर सकता है फोनोन्स प्रोड्यूस कर सकता है वो भी तो वो भी तो मेथड्स हैं उसके पास एनर्जी रिलीज करने के जरूरी तो नहीं कि वो टेम्परेचर इंक्रीज करेगा नॉन रेडिएटिव हाँ नॉन रेडिएटिव है बट नॉन रेडिएटिव कैन ऑल्सो लीड टू सम अदर फॉर्म ऑफ एनर्जी लॉसेस सिर्फ हीट में ही लॉस हो ये तो नहीं जरूरी क्योंकि हीट तो क्या है ना कि जल ही गया बट वाइब्रेशन करवाने के लिए बहुत ज्यादा एनर्जी चाहिए यू आर मेकिंग श्योर दैट यूर एटम स्टार्ट वाइब्रेट 
उसमें ज्यादा एनर्जी लूज हो जाती है उसकी सो फोनो ने मिट करता है मिट वो वाइब्रेट करवाता है ब्रेन को ओके हां वो दैट कैन यू कैन से कि वाइब्रेशंस की वजह से भी तो एज अ रिजल्ट हीट प्रोड्यूस हो सकती है एज अ अल्टीमेटली इट कैन प्रोड्यूस बट देन देन इट्स इट्स अ फिजिक्स ना कि जितनी हीट प्रोड्यूस हो रही है इफ वी मेक श्योर उतने ही टाइम में उतनी हीट लेजर से बाहर चली जा रही है टू द एटमॉस्फेयर देन वी आर सेफ एज लॉन्ग एज वी मेक श्योर दैट व्हाटएवर हीट इज जनरेटेड इन वन सेकंड दैट इज गेटिंग आउट ऑफ द लेजर इन वन सेकंड सो देन वी आर सेफ राइट किसी चीज की थर्मल हीटिंग yeah. ज्यादा तब होगी जब वी आर नॉट एबल टू ब्रिंग आउट दैट मच एनर्जी इन वन सेकंड जितनी प्रोड्यूस हो सो वी जस्ट हैव टू मेक श्योर कि उतनी एनर्जी बाहर भी निकल जाए बाकी लेजर्स गरम तो होते ही हैं यू नो दैट लेजर्स स्टार्ट गेटिंग हीट अब अगर ज्यादा यूज कर दो यस कूलिंग सिस्टम भी कूलिंग सिस्टम हां करते हो राइट ओके डेवलप करें अब मैथमेटिकल मॉडल डेवलप करते हैं हाउ व्हाट आर द फॉर्मूलास दैट वी नीड फॉर दिस सो बेसिकली यू नीड थ्री इक्वेशंस व्हिच आर बेसिकली फंडामेंटल ऑफ दिस और टू टू आई वुड से नंबर 1 इज दैट सिंस इलेक्ट्रॉन इज रिवॉल्विंग इलेक्ट्रॉन को सेंट्रिपिटल फोर्स कौन दे रहा है टू रिवॉल्व हु इज गिविंग सेंट्रिपिटल फोर्स टू द इलेक्ट्रॉन एंड दैट इज कुलम्बिक फोर्स वो कुलम्बिक फोर्स है तो बीच में एक न्यूक्लियस है न्यूक्लियस के ऊपर कितना चार्ज है जेड ई जेड ई एंड देन इलेक्ट्रॉन इज रिवॉल्विंग आउटसाइड सो लेट्स अज्यूम इलेक्ट्रॉन हैज अ मास एम एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट इलेक्ट्रॉन इज रिवॉल्विंग इन अ सर्कल ओके एंड द रेडियस ऑफ दैट सर्कल इज आर let's say r so what will happen is that electron ko coulomb centripetal force kitni so centripetal force kon de raha hai centripetal force basically hoti hai mv square by r ya kabhi kabhi centripetal force ko mv square by r bolte hain or sometimes we also call it as mr omega square okay now this mv square by r is equals to k q1 q2 q1 q2 by r square this is the coulomb's law Now K is known as one by four pi epsilon naught. Q one, Q one is a charge on nucleus which is Z e. Q two, charge on electron which is E, and this is R square, and this is m v square by R. ये हो गई हमारी number one equation. सबसे important. This is equation number one. Then second equation. Second equation, angular momentum is equals to n h cut, which is basically n h by two pi. and angular momentum hota kya hai angular momentum hota hai mvr so this is our equation number 2 this is also very important so based on these two equations now we want to develop our model now we want to develop our model so these two equations we will use so what do we want to know basically we want to know the following things ki atom kis kis radius mein ho sakta hai what are the possible values of radius is atom can take atom ki velocities kya kya ho sakti hai मींस इलेक्ट्रॉन की क्या क्या वेलोसिटी हो सकती है जब वो आर ऑर्बिट वन में घूम रहा है तो उसकी वेलोसिटी क्या है ऑर्बिट टू में घूम रहा है तो वेलोसिटी क्या है ऑर्बिट थ्री में व्हाट इज अ वेलोसिटी ऑर्बिट फोर व्हाट इज अ वेलोसिटी ऑर्बिट फाइव सो ऑन व्हाट इज द एनर्जी योर एटम हैज व्हाट इज द एनर्जी योर एटम हैज व्हाट आर द ऑल पॉसिबल वैल्यू ऑफ एनर्जी योर एटम कैन हैव एंड व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट द एनर्जी वी से ऑल थ्री एनर्जीज काइनेटिक एनर्जी पोटेंशियल एनर्जी एंड टोटल एनर्जी then what is the time period how much time it will take for electron to complete one revolution then what is magnetic moment then what is current basically we will answer these three six things so let's start answering first of all i want to answer that what will be the value of radius what are the possible values of radius your system or your atom can take kon kon si radius ki values jo hai wo possible So let's use. Let's use. So let's use the equation number two. If I use the equation number two, from that equation I will get R equals to n h cut. So basically, I'm get doing from here n h cut by m v. So this is what I got. Now I will put this in one. I will put this in one. So everyone can see here that if I bring m v here and h by two pi can be written as h cut, so my R will come as n h cut by m v. Now I will put this in one. So what does M one says? M v square by R equals to k, which is basically one by four pi epsilon naught z d square by R square. 
Now you can cancel R and R here. So you will get, so bring this R on other side and bring MB square on this side. Okay, so you can do that. Or what you can do here is actually you can find V from here. If you find V from here, you will get NH cut by MR. NH cut by MR. So let's cut this R and R here. Okay, then you get M. Then you have this V square left. V square is left, so square this up, you will get n square, h cut square, m square, r square, k, z, e square, and then we have one r on this side. Clear? And then what we can do, then we can bring this r on other side. So if you bring that r on other side and bring everything here, you get n square, h cut square, divided by m, k, z, e square. So all I did is bring the r here, Bring this mass here, nh cut square, m into k into z into e square. So this is the value of radius that you get. So if you put n equals to 1, you get the first value of radius. If you put n equals to 2, you get the second value of radius. If you put n equals to 3, you get the third value of radius. So these are possible values of radius. Radius can take all these possible values. Okay. And if I put this, everything you already know in this, I can shorten this formula because this formula will not be remembered. I can shorten this formula. If I shorten this formula, what will I get? I will get radius is equals to 0 0.53 n square by z into angstrom. So how did I shorten this formula? All I did is that I put the value of h cut square, I put the value of mass of electron, I put the value of 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught, I put the value of e square, if you put all the constants values, you will get 0.53 n square by z angstrom. This is something you have to remember. This is, this is something you have to remember. This is the first formula that you have to remember. Very, very important. Okay. Extremely important formula. This you should remember. Another thing that you should remember is that radius depends inversely on the mass of electron. You can clearly see that your radius is depending inversely on the mass of electron. I will tell you later on that why I asked you to remember this as well. You will remember this. Although I have already put the mass of electron and I have given it 0 0.53 as such, but later on you, I will tell you that why I asked you to remember this. Okay. So this is the formula for the radius. So let's find out that what are the possible values of radiuses. Pehla radius kya First, let's assume for hydrogen. So let's get an intuition. So hydrogen atom. Can anyone tell me that why R is directly proportional to N and not inversely proportional to N? How do you imagine this? Why R is inversely proportional to not inversely to N but directly to N? How do you imagine this? As the number of shell increases, the radius also increases. Yeah, as you are going to the higher energy levels N or higher levels N, 1, 2, 3, your radius should also increase, right? So that is why radius is directly proportional to n. If it was inversely, what will happen? You are going to n, 3, 4, 5 and your radius is decreasing. That cannot happen. So that is how, basically I am telling you how to remember the formula. Okay, so that is why I said that r is directly proportional to n. Now how do you imagine that r is inversely proportional to z? How do you imagine this? That r is inversely proportional to z? Um, sir, more of the atomic number, more of the attraction force. Yes. So if you go from hydrogen to helium or for lithium, what happens is that nucleus is pushing, pulling the electrons towards it more stronger. So now the radius is will get small. That is why radius is inversely proportional to Z. Agar aap jada Z ko bada doge, atomic number bada doge, you go from hydrogen to helium. So like jo nucleus push laga raha hai apne taraf, that will also increase. So radius kam ho jai. That is how we imagine. Now, uh, one smile asked a very interesting question that when, for what a kind of atoms that this model is valid? So, I was going to cover it in the drawbacks, but we can say that this model is valid only for single electron systems. Single electron systems. So, now I have a very small question for you. You have to tell me which of them has a single electron system. So, this you have to tell me this. Which of them is the single electron system? 
सोलर सिस्टम so now i my sun is changed actually right so that is a separate case that i have a electron or muon what is revolving around the nucleus that's a second case right so changing the atomic number changes the nucleus not something which is revolving around it right so this is how you imagine that okay the force is stronger so radius is will be less i i gave this idea so that you can remember the force. otherwise what will happen that this slips out that n square was direct or inverse so if you have some physical uh, significance behind that you will always remember the formula. okay great now next now this formula look at this formula carefully and does this tells us anything about the size of atoms size of atoms what do you think the size of atom will be look at this very carefully what do you think the size of atoms the radius of orbits is angstrom so the uh -huh. size of atoms will also be in what do you say angstrom so that was the first time some we not first time can anyone tell me that how rutherford came to the conclusion about the size of that bohr have a direct model bohr actually proved that radius atoms has a size of angstrom but how does the rutherford tell told about the size of that based on deflection of alpha particles one is deflection but in that deflection also there was one particular thing he was calculating distance of closest approach yes sir parameter ah uh, distance of closest sir. approach yeah uh, distance so distance of closest approach actually tells you so whatever was the calculation of distance of closest approach he was assuming that that was the size of it because he was assuming that electron is going very close alpha particle is going very close to the nucleus that is why he assumed that distance of closest approach is basically the size of that he assumed that uh, yes now we we can also do now what you are saying na, that from the back calculation you can tell the radius from the scattering data as well but at that time it was very difficult to do that the reason being because now you have computers to do that back calculation uh, initial days that was very difficult to do that. but now we can even look at the cross section data if you are a high energy physicist then you will be doing that and you can tell the about the sizes of the particles who deflected which you are true okay good now let's come to the second so we know the formula for uh, now radius now let's come to the velocity so for velocity our formula is very much simple because we already know this relation that velocity is equals to n h cut by m r so velocity is nh cut by mr so nh cut by mr and r value we have already found out this this is n square h cut square n square h cut square by mk z e square by mk z e square okay from there you can see that it will be uh, mass and mass will cancel out mass and mass will cancel each other out so you are left with this h cut will also cancel each other out so k by h cut into e square and this will be the case and then you have here 1 by n z by n this z by n because this z will be there and n by n square will be n so if you put the value of these constants 
if you put these values of constants, then you will get 2.18 into 10 to power 6 z by n meter per second. So this will be your velocity. This will be your velocity. This is not a velocity, single velocity. These are all the possible velocity. If you put n1, that will tell you that if electron is in radius, then how much is velocity? Kitni hogi. If you put n2, then it will tell you if the electron is revolving in a second orbit, then how much velocity is in 3, then it will tell you how velocity is in the So it is giving you the velocity for different, different orbits. So this is a second formula. Again, we have to remember. Another thing that we have to remember is that velocity does not depend upon the mass of electron. So electron ki jaga koi aur bhi ghumne lag jaye to koi fark nahi padega. Velocity is tab bhi yehi rahe. Because you can clearly see that mass of electron got cancelled. So velocity does not depend upon the mass of electron. So what do you say? Uh, what do you feel that why velocity is directly proportional to z? What is the physical intuition for that? Um, sir, more the attract attractive force there will be. Hmm. Uh, more uh, velocity the electron will need to escape from the attraction force. No, no. Electron is not escaping. Electron is revolving in an orbit with that yes, velocity. Yes, sir. Like yes. more centripetal force it needs. Ayush, you are right. Uh, so more force because if you go to the higher atom, force increases. If the force increasing, then centripetal force also increases. If I'm making sure that I'm in the first orbit, means radius is same, radius is keeping fixed, then I can say that velocity should increase. Velocity should increase. Because it more force means more centripetal force. More centripetal force means more velocity. That is why by increasing the atomic number, your velocity will increase. What do you think? Why velocity is inversely proportional to n? What is the physical significance for that? Why, why for velocity is decreasing as you go to the higher orbit? Because there is less force for the outer orbits. Uh, outer orbits means radius bad gaya. Radius yes, bad gaya to centripetal force kam ho gai. Yes. Centripetal force kam ho gai to iska malab v, v b velocity b jo hai wo kam. Everyone got this idea how we can imagine these things, how we can keep mind of the dependencies. We have to remember this in an example. So, so everyone can we repeat the dependency on atomic number? Atomic number. So if you increase the atomic number, what will happen? Now you have a stronger nucleus. So more force, more centripetal force means more velocity, right? So if force increases, then V will also increase, right? That's okay. that is why. So if you have a heavy nucleus, it will exert more force. And as a result, it will result into more velocity. Everyone clear? Everyone? What do you say? Tail velocity. Two formulas I gave. It should be very much clear to you. Sir, is the linear momentum cons v conserved? Yeah, yeah. Linear momentum is always conserved. Why? Why you think that it will not be? No, linear momentum of what? System or any electron? For individual electron, it's not conserved. But for electron and nuclear system combined, it is conserved. Okay. A heavy nucleus whose electron shifts from lower energy level to higher energy level, then the velocity of electron increases. For heavy nucleus whose electron shifts from low energy level to high energy level, yeah, increase. No, no, decreases. If you go to a higher energy level, which means you go for n, higher n, then your velocity will decrease, right? MVR equals to n equals to n squared by 2 pi. Yes. Okay. What's the point, Kanak? Uh, what do you want to say? MVR equals to n. Yes, yes, yeah, you are right. That's a good conclusion. Uh, we, we can say that n n cancels out and sorry, uh, not cancels out, one n cancels out. So n square and n cancels, so you are left with n one n. Z z directly cancels, so h cut left. Yes, right. Right, you are right. Hmm. Okay. Then third, then third, let's talk about the time period. 
टाइम पीरियड बेसिकली क्या होता है कि इलेक्ट्रॉन को एक फुल रेवोल्यूशन लेने में कितना टाइम लगे दैट इज नोन एज द कैपिटल टी सो कैपिटल टी इन ए सर्कुलर ऑर्बिट टाइम पीरियड इज बेसिकली टोटल डिस्टेंस कवर्ड हाउ मच विल बी द टोटल डिस्टेंस टू बाई आर एन सो दिस विल बी द टाइम पीरियड इन एन एथ ऑर्बिट मान लो एन एथ ऑर्बिट में घूम रहा है तो कितना टाइम लगे सो दैट विल बी टू पाई आर एन डिवाइडेड बाई विलोसिटी वी एन सो टू पाई आर एन आर एन वैल्यू वी ऑलरेडी नो कैन वी कैन वी मेक सम सो ओके वी कैन जस्ट पुट द वैल्यूज इफ यू विल पुट द वैल्यूज एवरी थिंग बिकॉज यू ऑलरेडी नो आर एन दिस आर एन यू ऑलरेडी नो इफ यू पुट वी एन दिस वी एन यू ऑलरेडी नो इफ यू पुट दिस वैल्यूज बेसिक थिंग दैट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर इन दिस केस यू डोंट हैव टू एक्चुअली पुट इट बेसिक थिंग दैट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर इन दिस इज दिस दिस फॉर्मुला इट सेल्फ यू डोंट हैव टू रिमेंबर एनी न्यू फॉर्मुला फॉर टाइम Why I am saying that why do why you should not remember any new formula? The reason for this is because you know you already know how to find radius, you already know how to find velocity. So why you want another fund? But we can talk about the dependence basically. You know that r depends on n square by z, and velocity depends upon z by n. So it means t n will depend upon n cube. By z square, it means t n depends upon n cube by z square. Everyone agrees with this. So t n is depending upon n cube by z square. Clear? Everyone agrees. Time period. So what is exactly? If you want to find the exact values of time period, you know how to find radius. You know how to find velocity. I gave you the two formulas. Find both of them. Divide them, and you will get your answer. Okay, what about the angular frequency? Angular frequency is omega. What is the formula for angular frequency? Everyone, anyone, omega. Two pi by t. Yeah, thank you. So two pi by t. So t you already know. So you know already how to find t. So what is t? T is basically two pi r n by v n. So now your omega will be basically v n by r. -N. You all already know the formula that v equals to r omega, so that is exactly the same formula. V equals to r omega. You already know what is v. You already know what is r. You already know both how to calculate. You can easily find omega. Okay, without doing the calculation, without doing the calculation. Now I I I trapped you. Without doing the calculation, predict that what will be the order of time period and what will be the order of frequency. Let's see how good. Good imagination you have. Try to imagine that how fast will electron be revolving and how how less the time will take. And then we will do the actual calculation. Just to imagine that how much time it is taking to complete one revolution. Sir, time period can be somewhere around ten power sixteen. Ten. Oh, no, no, sorry, sir. Uh, omega omega can be ten to the power of sixteen. Okay, one six. radians per second. So and it is then, basically of the order of ten to the power minus sixteen radians per second. Yes, right. You see how how little this time is. How little this time is. Let's let's do the exact calculation. Let's do the exact calculation. So the exact calculation is v n. V n is basically two point one eight into ten to power six. And R n is basically zero point five three into ten to power minus ten. So basically, I am doing this calculation for the first orbit for the hydrogen. Orbit, simplest case. So if I do that, I will basically get some something around four into ten to power sixteen. Something I did wrong. I I did it reverse. So Sir, this for be, I think this omega. omega. Yeah, this will be omega per second, and this will be time period which is ten to power minus sixteen seconds. so very very fast electron very fast moving it means in one second in just one second 10 to power 16 rounds your electron will take in one second in one second can you ever detect this electron who is moving so fast now you will when you think about these things the quantum mechanics does not seem so weird because try to imagine that if your fan is revolving at such a high speed will you ever see your fan moving at all 
will you be able to ever see the three sides of the fan that okay this is the one side of the fan this is a second side three three wings of the fan if your fan is revolving at this fast speed you can never see your fan's fan if you are taking the images of your fan sometimes you will see that your fan is in this side sometimes you will see fan in this side and if you combine them you sort of get a electron cloud these things uh, i will develop excuse me sir uh, yeah physically speaking physically uh, mm -hmm. fan can't take this uh, speed right it's uh, like oh, nothing can faster uh, faster than speed of light uh, no, then no, tangential this... speed may be very fast compared to no, no. Speed, speed, speed is basically 2.18 into 10 to power 6. Speed, I'm not okay. going beyond speed of light. I'm okay, saying nice. that in, in, in one second, this many rounds your fan is moving. Yes. Nice. This is not 10 to power 16 meter per second, right? This is radians per second. Yes, sir. Right. But if you multiply by radius, it will keep increasing. No, no. You, if you multiply by radius, then omega will also decrease. Oh, yes. Okay. Right. So we are not approaching the speed of light. We are we are almost 100 times less than that. That is not the case. But the only thing I'm saying that electron is moving so fast that you can't even try to imagine electron at one place. It's so fast. Speed. Okay, it's revolving so, so rapidly. So you should imagine these kind of things that, okay, when you imagine electrons, it's not like going slow and slow. It's like a very, very fast. Now I have another question. Can one electron or one atom Power the bulb. If you want to power the bulb, which basically needs a current of 1 milliampere. These days, LEDs roughly need this much current. So, 1 milliampere current you need to power the bulb. Can one atom do that? Uh, I, clear. Uh, I, I th no, I don't think no, sir. Okay, no. one answer is no. What, what others think? Do you think that one atom can bulb power up the bulb? Take a guess. Why you are hesitant? Take a guess. Say yes. No. What does your feeling say? Don't try to do any calculation. What does your feeling say? Yes, sir. It can move. It can. So one, one atom can power the bulb. This is what you are saying. Okay. Very, very yeah. bold statements. Very, very bold statements. Okay, let's see. Let's try to calculate the current in an atom. So, current is given by charge by time. Now, charge on an electron is of the order of 10 to power minus 19. Time is the order of 10 to power minus 16. Basically, we get the value of 10 to power minus 3, which is roughly 1 million. It's so, barely... one atom itself contains that much electrical energy, not energy, electrical current that is enough to power the bulb. One atom. And you have billion of atoms passing through your tube light every second. Then if one atom is itself enough to do that, why we need billions of atoms? Because direction is very random. Of okay. flow of electrons. So we, we, we cannot make any physics, make sure that only let's take three atoms only, but let's make their direction good enough. Uh, because it cannot maintain it for a longer period of time. Electron is maintaining itself for throughout the life because atom, as long as atom exists, electron is revolving. Sir, we haven't found a solution to harness that much power from an atom. Yes. So that's the only thing that. If electron is revolving, let's say like this. So then your circuit has to be between this. So I have to put my bulb here so that my electron can pass through this bulb. So now you have to imagine that how will you bring your wires and insert it inside an atom? Can you do that? You take the two wires and now you put those two wires in an atom. Can you do that? No, we cannot do that. Now how we will do atom is so small. How will you bring two wires and put it in an atom? But oh, if we me. can, yeah, please. Yeah. In reality, but this can't be true, right, sir? There is an electron cloud. Not nothing is actually rotating, right? No, no, no. This is reality too. True. How you picture it is different, but this is actually the value of current. These numbers are not wrong. Yeah, the how we imagine these numbers may be wrong. Okay, so 
in reality i have two ears okay i have two these devices that's one way to look at it someone else will have other way to look at it right half glass half empty glass that's a kind of modeling thing but these numbers comes out to be true that is why bohr model is so much accepted that these numbers are very close to actual values numbers are not wrong time periods velocities radiuses are not wrong but how we imagine those things are wrong okay so there is It's actually electron that... has an angular momentum as i mentioned electron has an angular momentum but not because it is spinning around its axis mm -hmm. but because it is born with that right we talked about that right so only thing is that how we imagine it but the numbers are correct in reality one atom has the current of 1 milli ampere and if somehow we are able to find a way to put the two wires in an atom we can actually need only just one atom to make sure that our bulb is glowing um sir i have question like if it has 1 milli ampere and it's uh, always like uh, going, going around and around and around and around yes. uh, hmm. like who is providing this much energy to keep doing that to keep current flowing electrostatic force that is the that is what uh, okay okay if something is running someone is running it he has a kinetic energy right and uh, can i keep running with 10 meter per second without any force if i, I if i just time. if i just want to run at 10 meter per second i don't want to change my speed can i just keep running with 10 meter per second without any force what what does newton law says about it yeah, we can if we uh, first no law friction, if we... nothing no friction nothing right we don't need any force to keep running right so we do not want any, we don't need any force to maintain our kinetic energy i will i can have this much kinetic energy for infinite amount of lifetime i don't need anyone to provide that i am born with this kinetic energy and i can just maintain my kinetic energy for infinite time that's what newton first law says na in order yes. to be in the speed you you don't need any force so why do you ask me this that in order to keep electron revolving in an orbit you why why you are asking me ki who is giving that energy? electron can maintain its kinetic energy i am not changing the electron's kinetic energy right i need energy to change the kinetic energy i don't need energy to maintain the kinetic energy kinetic energy can maintain itself body moving with 10 meter per second can keep moving till the end of its life without any external help that's the newton's law what do you say okay so that is any why magnet I... yeah please please yeah any how if i inserted resistance light bulb so i can't use the electron revolving for current mode you say resistance yeah resistance concept you inserted yeah tell me sir jaise ye question tha ki kinetic energy hamesha maintain karte rahega yadi is pe koi bhi humne portion lagaya to infinite time tak uspe iske paas hi kinetic energy rahegi but jis hum ye bulb glow karna tha aur humne agar kisi tarah se insert kar diya to electron iske andar se bhayega aur fir wo apni energy lose kar jayega kyunki ab ye koi isolate again again i want to challenge this slide again i want to challenge this resistance is so high because billions of atoms are passing through the wire and billions of collisions are happening that is why resistance is so high but now imagine you have a wire and only one electron has to pass through what do you think how many collisions will happen very less very 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 less collisions because only one electron has to pass so collisions will significantly decrease resulting in very much decrease in resistance what do you think in But a wire resistance is one ohm energy. yeah please yeah electron will lose this energy in one day yeah, lose day, they will day, lose day. i i i agree that even if we enter the wires electron will lose the energy because electron will collide with the atoms and as a result it will lose its yes i agree agree there is no and that's also one of the challenges that is why we don't have any atomic matrix that only one atom is giving us the energy but i'm just giving you an idea that one atom if technological back, uh, challenges are not there one atom itself contains that much current which can power the bulb okay so from the pure physics point of view that's that's a thing now 
if this much current is there, then how we can use this current? We don't want to use this in electrical circuits, but you know, with the current, magnetism is involved. Magnetism is involved. That is why atoms have such a high magnetic uh, effects. You know, the atoms itself has a very high magnetic effects. Right. So now let's talk about that who calculates the magnetic effect, how we can calculate the magnetic effect. And that is known as the magnetic moment. Magnetic moment. Magnetic Sir, does this mean magnetic moment is quantized for hydrogen? Yes, it is. Obviously, Obviously. it is. So, magnetic moment is known as current into area. So, current formula we already, we just did. It is E by T. You know E already. Time period, I, calc I, I told you how to find it. And now current comes the area. Area will be pi R N square. So, your magnetic moment will also be quantized. So this is how you found the magnetic moment. So the units of magnetic, what is magnetic moment? So you know, whenever there is a magnetism, whenever there is a current, whenever there is a current, there will be a magnetic field or there is a magnetism. Whenever there is a magnetism, it will always come in pair. North and South will both be there. And whenever it is coming in pair, we can define the magnetic moment. Or you can say uh, magnetic sir, type. Yeah, please, please. Is it necessary that uh, if there is current, there will be a magnetic field? Yes, it's necessary. Otherwise, which law will fail? You tell me. Which law will be in problem? Uh, Maxwell's fourth equation is there. No, no. The law which, of magnetic field is charge density law? time. There's a name to that law. There, one law. You tell me. It's a simple law. Ampere's law. Ampere's law. You know this, right? D dot DL equals to nu naught into I enclosed. So as long as current is there, magnetic field has to be there. Otherwise, Ampere's law itself is in problem. So that current should be moving, sir, right? Yeah, electron is a moving charge, no? Yes, sir. Right. So electron will is a moving charge. Okay. Nice. So what we learned, we, we learned how to find radius, velocity, time period. Uh, then what we said, uh, current and magnetic moment. Let me see if anything is left in my notes. Okay. No, nothing is there. Okay. Now I don't want to stop here and I want to go to find the very useful formula, which is energy. So now let's find the energy of the. Excuse okay. me, sir. Like you can, can you also tell dependence of magnetic moment, like dependence on Z and N? Sure. I will be sharing the notes, uh, proper notes actually, in which all the dependencies are there, but we can do that. How does R and how does time period depends? So time period depends upon n cube by z square. Okay. So time n cube by z square. Okay. And R n square. R n square depends upon n square by z ka square. So it will be square four. So it will be basically z square, z square cancel. It is n. So magnetic movement depends upon n. Thanks. Okay. Why does it not depend upon Z? There is another formula for magnetic moment, if you all remember, and that is given by Q by 2M into L. This is also one of the very important formula for the magnetic moment. Right. Sometimes you also might have seen in this form E by 2M into L because charge is nothing but E. E. So what is L basically? L is basically N H cut. So if I put the value of N H cut, so I will get E H cut by 2M into N. So basically, you can clearly see that your magnetic moment only depends upon N. Can anyone tell me what is this thing? You know that. What is this thing? Bohr's Bohr magneton. magneton. Bohr magneton. So Bohr's magneton. Okay. So Bohr magneton. And uh, then you can clearly see that your magnetic moment is N times nu B. So magnetic moment I can be either nu B or 2 nu B. Uh, or 3 new B and so on. Sir, what is this actually Bohr magneton? It is basically a unit given for... Uh, unit given. Yes, yes. You are right. It's a... Okay. Rather than writing this again and again, let's define the unit. That's it. You are right. It's a unit. Okay. Clear? Everyone clear with these ideas? Now let's talk about the energy. What is energy? So when I say energy, is it an energy of electron or an atom? 
when i give the formula for energy is it an energy of electron i am giving or i am telling the energy of an atom 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 why not electron because only thing that is revolving is electron but uh, the energy involved is not only the kinetic energy of that moment okay so because it's... of that potential energy you are saying that yes. it should be atom so combined even though the kinetic energy is also coming because of nucleus because if nucleus is not there how will electron revolve so when we define the energy we define the energy of an atom we don't say that it's an energy of an electron it's an energy it's energy of an atom in first state energy of an atom in second state energy of an atom in third state we don't say energy of electron in first state because whenever you say the word energy that has to be of an atom not of an electron बिकॉज दोनों की वजह से एनर्जी आ रही है किसी एक की वजह से नहीं आ रही ठीक है सो नाउ एनर्जी इज ऑफ द टू टाइप्स नंबर वन इज वट कैन एनी वन टेल मी देर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ एनर्जीज बी वेरी प्रिसाइज विद योर वर्ड वट आर टू एनर्जीज बी वेरी प्रिसाइज हाँ आई वुनेटिक एंड पोटेंशियल सर बट कनेटिक एनर्जी इज ओके बट बी वेरी प्रिसाइज विद सेकेंड वर्ड so that should electrostatic be, potential energy yeah electrostatic potential energy because potential energy itself is made up is can be a different kinds that is basically mechanical potential energy electrostatic kinetic energy and so on potential energy and so on so how do we define kinetic energy that is simply half mv square okay and how do we define potential energy potential energy is k q1 q2 by r okay so these are the two energies you can even write it little bit more because if you put the value of v ultimately what you will get ultimately you will get how will you get because you know this equation that mv square by r is equals to k z e into e by r square so from here i can say that mv square will be equals to k z e square by r it means my kinetic energy which is half on both sides will roughly be 1 by or you can say k z e square by 2 r n and my electrostatic potential energy will be minus k z e square into e why minus because this electron is negatively charged so if electron is negatively charged so i can write this neg neg negative here so my potential energy will be minus k z e square by r n okay so this is my kinetic energy formula very very important this is my potential energy formula very very important and what will be my total energy formula my total energy formula will be kinetic energy which is k z e square by 2 rn minus k z e square by rn okay so these are the two values if i do that i will get minus k z e square by 2 rn so this is the formula final formula for my all the type of energies now a very interesting thing that gets obeyed here is known as virial theorem so virial theorem is getting uh, used here and very much it is getting fine fine working fine here. so virial theorem says that if your potential is dependent upon r to power n potential depends r to power n but does it means force kiske upar depend karti hai 1 by r square ke upar kyunki electrostatic force depends upon 1 by r square potential kya hota hai पोटेंशियल होता है फोर्स इनटू डी आर इंटीग्रेशन यू ऑलरेडी नो द फॉर्मुलाइनस डी वी बाई डी आर सो इफ आई वॉन्ट वी ओनली आई नीड इंटीग्रेशन ऑन बोथ साइड सो दिस विल बी लाइक दिस सो आपका पोटेंशियल कितना हो जाएगा आपका पोटेंशियल हो जाएगा बेसिकली इफ आई डू द इंटीग्रेशन ऑफ दिस आई विल गेट वन बाय आर राइट सो माई पोटेंशियल डिपेंड्स अपॉन वन बाय आर डिपेंड्स ओके डिपेंड्स अपॉन इट मीन्स द वैल्यू ऑफ एन इज माइनस वन because my potential is depending on 1 by r which basically means r minus 1 so n is basically minus 1 if this is the case if this is there then the virial theorem says that average potential energy sorry average kinetic energy is equals to n by 2 times average potential energy now if n is minus 1 by 2 it is minus 1 by 2 into v into t so this is the relation and this relation is getting obeyed how it is getting obeyed because kinetic energy is equals to k z e square by 2 r on the other hand potential energy is minus k z e square by r so if you want to go from here to here you all have all you have to do is multiply by minus 1 by 
So if you multiply this with minus one by two, you are going to get kinetic energy, right? So this is the virial theorem which is being obeyed. Okay, and similarly, if I want to find the average energy, then that will be average kinetic energy plus average potential energy. Average kinetic energy you already found out as minus half v, and this is already v, so that will be simply v by two, and that is true. Because what is our total energy? Total energy is Kz square by two R n negative. So all you have to, if you want to come from here to here, all you have to do is divide by two, and you will get your answer. So virial theorem is getting obeyed here, and that is how you can use your virial theorem. And these relations are very important. Sometimes only potential energy is given, and you directly can find that kinetic energy by using these formulas. So these are the three formulas for kinetic energy, potential energy, and total energy. But the, these are just the formulas. We have to get a feeling of it. How how we can imagine it? How we can imagine? It. So now we are not going to deal with kinetic energy and potential energy separately. First of all, you have to prove. Let let's now do the some questions actually theoretical questions. Prove that your orbits are circular. Entire model is done. What what makes you think that your mod your Orbits are circular. What proves that? Sir, Bohr's postulate. No, no. From energy formula. Can your orbits be ever parabola or hyperbola? Why? No. Dab of e by dab r equal to zero. Okay, so your energy. Orbits are stable. Yes, your energy is negative. So whenever energy is negative, whenever the energy is negative, you can either have circular orbits or at max elliptical orbits. Why only these two orbits are possible? Why? Why not any? Why not? Sir, because because, uh, hmm, because uh it negative sign uh, negative sign shows that it is in bound state bound state yes orbit has to be in bound orbits has to be bound negative sign don't represent bound negative sound sign represents attraction attraction and attraction basically results into bound motion bounded motion your your motion should be bounded it should be closed. It should come out to be bounded or closed. Hyperbola and parabola are not bound. Hyperbola will just come and go. Parabola will come and go. They are not bound. What is bound? Bound is either circular or elliptic. But in somehow, if your energy total energy is zero, then you have a parabolic orbits. And if somehow your energy is positive, then you will have the hyperbolic orbits. This is the concept. Okay. So this this is the number one thing that you should always keep in mind. Now next thing. Next thing. Okay, fine. So let's talk about these energy numbers. So E n comes out to be minus k z e square by r n. If you put the values of this, you will realize that if you put the basic constant values, you will get minus thirteen point six z square by n square electron volt. So this is the value of uh, energy you should remember. This is very very important. Z square by n square electron volt. So this is another value, another formula that you remember. And I think most of you might have always seen this formula before, and many of you might already remember this. Okay. Now let's have a physical intuition for that. Now let's try to make a energy diagram for that. So let's make energy diagram. And I will not make it. I will just bring that from the very good image. And this is the image that you had. You are familiar seeing from the your lower classes. This is the image, right? So now this is a different energy levels given. One energy level, two energy level, three energy level. How do you imagine energy levels? First of all, before we enter into this diagram, how do you imagine energy? Levels? Are those some sort of spaces where electron can be? Energy levels are some sort of rooms where electron can pre be present. What do you think? How do you imagine energy level? 
when i say energy level do you imagine this this diagram where one energy level two energy level so in atoms there are different different energy levels where the electron can be present sir that is what bohr's model tells right like it will be in this this energy levels no it's just a it's just energy how do i imagine if i am running fast or if then i have to be closer to the nucleus so i have to be closer to, if i am running fast i will be closer to the nucleus and i will have some energy e1 i am running very fast now this is this is where brain stops working okay so i am running very very fast very very fast so let's see speed very fast most fast okay most fast i am distance from the nucleus closest i am closest to the nucleus but my energy is minimum i am running very fast electron is running very fast but as a result his its energy is minimum how many of you agree formula suggests us that how many of you agree with this does formula tells us this only that if i am very fast i am close to the nucleus that's what our formula says that velocity is more it means i am closer to the nucleus lower orbits will have more energy higher orbits will have less energy and if i am closer then my energy is minimum why my energy is minimum so let's say for hydrogen atom for hydrogen atom z is 1 right z is 1 so now let's start putting the values of n n1 n2 n3 so on if n is 1 i get energy minus 13.6 electron volt if i put n2 what is energy i will get minus 3.4 if i put n2 what will i get minus 3.4 electron volt if i put n9 what is energy i will get minus 1.51 electron volt if i put n4 i will get minus 0.85 electron volt which energy is more this n1 or n4 four 4 is more but 13.6 is a big number so minus sign sir. minus sign is also there so negative of 13.6 is smaller number negative of 0.85 is a bigger number even though i am running faster faster but my total energy will be less so that is the intuition you have to change in your mind because whenever Excuse someone, me, sir. yeah please, yes, sir. please. but store ah. energy will be more in n1 right stored energy uh, that is why na that what obviously if even if you are running fast and still you have a less energy it means uh, it means that stored energy in you is very small because you are almost using all the energy for kinetic okay. right right okay clear good nahi nahi this is not the case ha ah, okay fine anyway Okay, so this level has an energy of minus thirteen point six. So how do we imagine our levels basically? So I am running fast. I am close to the nucleus. I have some energy. Then I started running slow. So I went little bit, little bit away from the nucleus. So I have again some energy. Then I started running even slower. I am more away from the nucleus. So my energy increased, increased. Energy is increasing. I went even far. my speed become even slower my energy increased more ultimately i am not at all attached to the nucleus my final energy became zero now i am not attached to the nucleus now i am out of the ground and now i am sitting on the desk i am completely sitting on the desk i am but my energy is maximum that is the case when i was running very fast my total energy was this when i went outside the ground and i sat on the desk and my energy became zero then i can say my energy is maximum so that is how you have to imagine inside the atom so now i have different energy levels and uh, what can happen is that atom can excite itself from one energy level to second energy that's what happen in the ground because early morning when you are running if you want to run fast you have to take one lane if you want to run slow you have to take second lane so atom can also take different different lanes according to the electrons requirement agar electron ko tez bhagna hai to pass aa jaye slow bhagna hai to dur chal jaye theek hai so now this give rise to the different different absorption and radiations 
तो क्या होगा कि अगर एटम अब्जॉर्ब करेगा लाइट तो एक्साइटेड स्टेट में चला जाएगा और अगर एक्साइटेड स्टेट से वापिस आएगा तो एनर्जी अमिट दिस इज वट इज है सो नाउ लेट्स ट्राई टू इमेजिन सो अवर फर्स्ट लेवल हैज एनर्जी माइनस थर्टीन पॉइंट सिक्स माई सेकेंड हैज एन एनर्जी ऑफ माइनस थ्री पॉइंट फोर माई थर्ड लेवल हैज एनर्जी ऑफ माइनस वन पॉइंट फाइव वन माई फोर्थ लेवल हैज एनर्जी ऑफ माइनस जीरो पॉइंट एट फाइव एंड सो ऑन ओके नाउ नाउ कम्स एन पॉइंट now let's start giving you an imagination so now let's say you are at a room temperature your hydrogen gas is at the room temperature what do you think let's say you have a 10 atoms of hydrogen atom and you are at a room temperature how many of you how many of them will roughly be in the ground state how many of you how many of atoms i should put in ground state out of 10 How many of them will be in ground? Sir, why can't all of them be in ground state? They can be, but I'm saying probability wise, yeah, they can be. They can be all in ground. They can all be in excited. That's fine. Uh, Boltzmann formula we can use. No, e no, to the we power don't use the formula. I'm saying just imagine, imagine that. What does your imagination tell? You? More, ah, uh, yeah. So that's something like this. More than half, like this, this kind of imagination. What, what do you think? Okay, let's start from zero Kelvin. So let's say you are zero Kelvin. then how many of the atoms are in ground all the atoms are in ground state all the atoms are in ground state okay all the atoms are in ground now you started increasing the temperature so now you are increasing the temperature now you are increasing that temperature so initially all 10 were in ground now what happens is that eight of them are in ground one is here and somehow one is here so now Ultimately, temperature is very very much higher. So four are here, then three are here, two are here, one is here. So atom started going to the higher and higher energy levels. Okay, so that is what happens. Okay, so now your atoms are uniformly distributed, not uniformly, but some atoms are also in excited state. Most of the atoms are still in ground state because room temperature is not a very high temperature. Atom को तो room temperature feel भी नहीं होता. What do you think? What is the temperature of atom? Temperature atom का temperature क्या है? When you say at you are at a room temperature, so तुम्हारा temperature three hundred Kelvin. But what is the temperature of an atom? At what temperature your atom is at? Same temperature. You you sure? Sir, now by looking at this question, hmm. like I, I am questioning the. uh definition of temperature itself now like i am confused like what does should... definition of temperature what is the definition of temperature yeah you tell me what is the definition of temperature how do you conceive temperature yeah your zero law basically defines that but yeah tell me okay so give me an answer think about this we will not stop this for today but give me an answer that if, what is the temperature of an atom when you are at a room temperature is atom is also at 300 kelvin or the temperature of atom is something else but anyway whatever is the temperature of atom now your atoms it is in the different different energy levels okay so everyone so first thing you have to tell always have to remember in physics that any spontaneous so can anyone tell me the meaning of spontaneous word happens uh, nobody needs to make it happen it will happen so yeah what do you what do you, no yeah what do, what do you say someone was also was mentioning but automatic automatic so it's an automatic thing you don't need to do anything it will happen automatically instantaneous right? no instant that's spontaneous the oh sorry that simul uh, simultaneous na no? instantaneous or simultaneous i'm talking about spontaneous so spontaneous word means that it will happen automatically river falling down right uh, ball dropping down so it will happen automatically so any spontaneous events all the events which goes from higher energy level to in lower energy level are basically spontaneous they will ha happen automatically you don't need to push to be like that you need to push that if you want to be at the lower energy then you are sleeping and then suddenly you want to study you want to go to the higher energy level you need to push yourself but other way around we don't have to push we can easily go from teach learning to the sleep so every automatic process is going from higher energy to the lower energy every not 
one or two, but every. Okay. So let's imagine that. So now let's say that your atom is in also in second, third, four, some atoms are like this. So if the atoms comes from second energy level to the first energy level, then you emit one radiation. Then you emit one radiation. And then let's say your atom comes from third energy level to first energy level. Again, you emit one more radiation. If you come from the fourth energy level to the first, again, you emit one energy. So all the, all the transitions, all the transitions, all the transitions which are coming from higher energy levels, basically n greater than 1 to n equals to 1, they give rise to a one particular series, one particular series, which is known as Lyman series. And these radiations will be in the UV region. UV region. So, if your atoms are doing a transition from high energy level to ground state, which is n equals to 1, it will be resulting in many transitions because it can come from 2 to 1, it can come from 3 to 1, it can come from 4 to 1, it can come from 5 to 1, it can come from 6 to 1 and so on. Okay. And as long as it is coming back to 1, this will give rise to a series, series or you can say band. What is band basically? You will get this kind of band and in this band, there will be many energy levels. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so on. Okay. 7, 8 and so on. So these will be lines like this. So this entire band will be known as Lyman band. And this band, these, these radiations will be in the UV region. And you will be very surprised to know that how UV was discovered. So first of all, tell me that UV has a greater energy than visible or lower energy than visible? Uh, greater. UV. So how do you imagine UV, first of all? How do you imagine UV? That purple kind of light you imagine, that is UV. Although yes. you cannot see UV, but UV is something which is basically higher energy than visible. Am I right? Higher energy than visible. So yes. if it is a higher energy than visible, how, how did we discover that's a very important discovery? So I will, I am, I also don't know very sure, but uh, I can tell you, I remember one story. So there is something known as sodium chloride crystal or some chloride crystals. And those chloride crystals, when you put a light on them, so let's say you have a crystal and you are putting a light. Let's say you are, you are shining the black, brown light or let's say red light. So those crystals will burn. Now you change the color, it will burn more. All of a sudden what happens that once the radiations were coming, these crystals were burning themselves and they were burning much higher than any color. So people say, yeah, burn ki ho rahe crystals. why these crystals are getting burned, even though we are not putting any light on it. Light is coming from the at, uh, spectra itself and uh, we are not in the visible region. Why these crystals are burning? So then people thought, okay, there is some other form of energy which is much stronger than the visible itself. And that was UV. So UV was causing the burning of those crystals and that is how we came to know about the UV spectra. Okay, that is why Lyman was a person who detected that UV spectra. Okay, so now, now you tell me that what will be the energy of this radiation, which is coming from n equals to 2 to n equals to 1. So what will be the energy of this radiation? So you are coming from minus 3.4 to th minus 13.6. So the energy of the radiation will be minus 3.4 minus of minus 13.6, which is basically equals to, you can say 10.2 electron volt. Similarly, what will be the radiation of this energy level, which is coming from N3 to N1, that will be minus 1.51 minus of minus 13.6, that will be roughly 12 point something, uh, something uh, you can say 12.1 electron volt. So whenever you have to find the energy of the radiation, so subtract the initial energy with the final. Energy difference will be the energy of the radiation. Jitra bhi levels ke beech mein energy difference hoga, wahi hoga aapka energy ke equal. So I can say that energy of the radiation, energy of the radiation will be equals to the difference in the energy level. So Em minus En. Or agar mujhe frequency nikalni hai, so I can put my energy equals to H nu. So my frequency will be Em minus En divided by H. So, here I will get the frequency of my radiation. 
कि मेरी रेडिएशन किस फ्रीक्वेंसी की है और अगर मुझे वेवलेंथ निकालनी है तो एच सी बाई लेके सो दैट इज हाउ आई डू द कैलकुलेशन सो द जनरल फॉर्मूलाज फॉर द डिफरेंट डिफरेंट सीरीज नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू गिव यू इज बेसिकली लेट्स कॉल दिस सीरीज लाइमन देन वी हैव लाइमन बालमर पैशन एंड ब्रैकेट एंड पी फंड राइट there are multi, some more as well but these are five basically you will get an idea with this five so these are the five okay in lyman what is happening you are coming from n greater than 2 and you are landing on n equals to 1 so aap a n greater than 2 se ya to 2 se rahe ho 3 se rahe ho 4 se rahe ho 5 se rahe ho aap yahan se aa rahe ho aur 1 pe land kar so you are landing from n greater than 1 and you are landing on n1 इन बालमर आप एन टू पे लैंड कर रहे हो और आप आ रहे हो एन ग्रेटर देन टू से थ्री से आ रहे हो फोर से आ रहे हो फाइव से आ रहे हो लैंड आप टू पे सिमिलरली इन दिस आप एन थ्री पे आ रहे हो लेकिन आ आप एन ग्रेटर देन थ्री से रहे हो आप इसमें एन फोर पे आ रहे हो लेकिन आ एन ग्रेटर देन फोर पे रहे हो इनमें आप एन फाइव पे आ रहे हो लेकिन आप आ एन ग्रेटर देन फाइव पे रहे हो सो यू कैन क्लियरली सी यू कैन क्लियरली सी इफ यूर रेडिएशन से कमिंग फ्रॉम थ्री टू टू दिस विल बी बाई बालमर If you are coming from n four to two, this will be again bulk. So now let's check a little bit. If you are coming from this to this, in which series this will lie? Bracket, sir. Bracket. What do you say? This transition in which in which series it will belong? Five to four. What do you say? Bracket. Okay. What about Bracket. this? What about this? Balmer. Balmer. Okay. So you have to see this number. कि वो आ कहाँ पे रहा है? अगर one पे आ रहा है तो Lyman, two पे आ रहा है Balmer, three पे आ रहा है Bracket, uh, Lyman, Balmer, Lyman, Balmer, Pashan, four पे आ रहा है Bracket, five पे आ रहा है P fund. Right. So you have to see कि आ कहाँ पे रहा है. Okay. Fine. So this is the thing. And then. आपको पता है एक फॉर्मूला वेरी फेमस फॉर्मूला वन बाय लेमडा इक्वल्स टू आर आर इज अ रिडबर्ग कांस्टेंट आर इज बेसिकली दी रिडबर्ग्स कांस्टेंट रिडबर्ग्स कांस्टेंट ओके रिडबर्ग कांस्टेंट ओके आपको रिडबर्ग कांस्टेंट की वैल्यू मैं एक्जेक्टली दे देता हूं व्हाट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ रिडबर्ग कांस्टेंट एंड दैट विल बी इक्वल्स टू 1.097 इनटू 10 टू पावर 7 पर मीटर तो रिडबर्ग कांस्टेंट What is one by lambda? One by lambda is known as a wave number. Wave number की बात हमने की थी. Wave number is one by lambda. This will be equal to one by r, and this formula will be one by sorry. R कहाँ से रहा है और R कहाँ पे रहा है? Right. That will be. So wave number has to be positive. तो या positive करने के लिए यहाँ पे आपको क्या करना पड़ेगा? छोटा number डालना पड़ेगा. तो R कहाँ पे रहा है? Right. Finally कहाँ पर आ रहा है? Final. And ये कहाँ से आ रहा है? राइट सो इफ दिस इज बिग दिस इज स्मॉल या सो दिस विल बी योर फॉर्मूला तो ये आप फॉर्मूला में आप आराम से वैल्यू निकाल सकते हो लाइमन में फाइनल क्या वैल्यू होगी फाइनली कहाँ पे पहुंच जाएगा वन पे आएगा कहाँ से कहीं से भी आ सकता है टू थ्री फोर फाइव सो वन बालमर में फाइनली कहाँ पर पहुंचेगा टू पे आ कहाँ से सकता है थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सो वन सिमिलरली पाशन में फाइनली कहाँ पे आ जाएगा थ्री पे कहाँ से आ रहा है फोर फाइव सिक्स सो वन एंड ब्रैकेट में फाइनली कहां पर आएगा फोर पे आ कहां से रहा है फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट सो वन अगर आप पीफन की बात करो तो फाइनली फाइव पे आएगा आ कहां से रहा है सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन सो वन ओके सो दिस इज योर फॉर्मूला ये फॉर्मूला आपको याद रखना है इससे आप कोई भी कोई भी वेवलेंथ निकाल सकते हो किसी भी स्पेक्ट्रल लाइन किसी भी स्पेक्ट्रल लाइन ठीक है सो लेट्स डू इट लेट्स डू सम थिंग्स नाउ अब हम कुछ अपने स्पेक्ट्रा को इमेजिन करने की कोशिश करते हैं सो लेव लेट्स इमेजिन अवर स्पेक्ट्रा ओके फॉर्मूला हमें जो ध्यान रखना है वो होगा वन बाय लेमडा इक्वल्स टू आर आर इज अड बाई कॉन्स्टेंट वन बाय एन फाइनल स्क्वायर माइनस वन बाय एन इनिशियल स्क्वायर ठीक ये फॉर्मूला हम ध्यान रखेंगे और अब इस फॉर्मूला के बेस पे हम अपने स्पेक्ट्रा को इमेजिन करते हैं फुल स्पेक्ट्रा को फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल मैं अपना स्पेक्ट्रा वेवलेंथ की तरह मेजर करना शुरू कर So, lower wavelength से मैं देखना शुरू करूंगा और हायर वेवलेंथ तक आई विल सी वट डू सी वट विल बी द फर्स्ट सीरीज जो आपको दिखेगी यहां पर आपको कौन सी सीरीज दिखेगी लाइमन 
मतलब यही सब भी इमेजिन करना यही सब नहीं लिखा होता बुक्स में यू स्टार्ट विद द लोअर वेवलेंथ तो सबसे लोअर वेवलेंथ वाली कौन सी होगी डिक्रीज हो गई एंड यू मीन्स वेव लेंथ इंक्रीज then it is in near infrared near infrared means energy decreases even more wavelength increased even more bracket is in infrared it means energy decreased even more wavelength increased even more then it is far infrared energy decreased even less even more and wavelength increased even more so sabse choti wavelength kiski hui lyman ki so the first line that you will see is lyman okay then you will see balmer then you will see lyman balmer passion and so on okay so what do you think kaun si kaun si series sabse pehle discover hui hogi bada simple which will which series would have got discovered first balmer balmer because okay. that's visible you can see alag alag series ko alag alag scientist ke naam pe kyu diya gaya we can we can just give a Why? Why not the same size? Lyman को बाल बालमर को Lyman series नहीं दिखी थी. बालमर को Lyman series दिखी थी या नहीं? पहले discover हो गई बाल. When Balmer was doing an observations, was he able to see the Lyman and Parsons series or not? Maybe at that time these uh, lights were not discovered. So. No, no, they cannot see. Either you can see UV light, or you can see Balmer light, or you can see pa. Oh, sorry. You either you can see visible, or you can see UV, or you can see infrared. Aapka setup kis tarah se hai? If you have UV setup, you will only see UV. If you have visible setup, you will only see visible. No one can see all the spectra at once. So Balmer, when the, he was doing a discovery, he only saw the visible light. Lyman, when was doing an experiment, he only saw UV. Ha, visible to automatically dikhai hoga. but that's difference is very much so i might be usne nahi dekha passion when he was doing he was doing infrared studies so he only saw lime passion series so that is why every scientist saw the different series that is why the different names okay now tell me this line this line first line of the lyman series will this be 2 to 1 or infinity to 1 बिकॉज आपको वन पे आना सो यू कैन आइर कम फ्रॉम टू टू वन और इन्फिनिटी टू वन विच वन विल बी फर्स्ट में Yeah, because infinity to one. Let's come from infinity to one. If you come from infinity to one, your energy energy will be maximum. Energy of the radiation. How do you get out of it? First energy minus final energy. So, the most energy of the energy is radiation. Ki hogi. Infinity is one. Ki. So, the maximum energy will be for infinity to one. Maximum energy. So, if energy is maximum, then wavelength will be minimum. So, minimum wavelength will be infinity to one. Then सेकेंड आपको बहुत ही क्लोज दिखेगा थर्ड भी बहुत क्लोज दिखेगा देन यू विल स्टार्ट सींग समथिंग लाइक दिस और ये जो लाइन होगा ना दिस लाइन दिस लाइन दिस लाइन विल बी बेसिकली सो दिस वॉज इन्फिनिटी टू वन बट दिस विल बी टू टू वन ओके कैन एनी वन टेल मी दैट वट इज इन्फिनिटी टू वन नोन एज there is a very special name to this line which is known as infinity to 1 ionization right what what is it ionization energy so this is basically known as 
two names it has infinity to one one of them is known as series limit one of the name is series limit and another name to this is basically you can say series limit you can say yeah series limit i think you can say yeah series limit and this will be your first line basically people call it as first line first line first line because it is coming from 1 to 2 Although it is wrong to say it is a first line because it bends. Kya yaha se dekhna shuru kar rahe yaha se dekhna shuru. But this is known as basically many times first line. Or isko bola jata hai series line. And also call as tail. Tail bhi bola jata hai. Because you can clearly see, if you see the crocodile tail, right? Alligator's tail. So alligator's tail mein kya hota hai? If you see alligator's tail, uh, maybe I can show you an image. So it was basically compared with that alligator's tail. So when you go by the end of the tail, so kya hota na? alligator's tail, pe you see these kind of things. So initially those, the separation between those things are large, but by the end, your tail comes, the lines are very close to each other. Lines are very, very close to each other. So this is like an alligator's tail. Okay. Then you have a Balmer. Then you comes with Balmer. Again, Balmer, this line will be from infinity to two. And this line will be basically from 3 to 2. Then you come passion and so on. Okay. So that is how you get the different, different lines. Fine. So now you tell me these, so these what's things. The first line huh? tarifa? Yeah, yeah. What, what is it? First line tarifa is infinite minus box till like a one third. I, I can't hear you well. Right? Again, please. because this will be your first line. First line kya hogi? 2 se 1 ko first line bolenge or infinity se 1 ko series limit ko. Okay? Okay. So now give me these values. So you have to tell me the value of series limit and you have to tell me the value of first line. So aapko hydrogen atom assume karke chalna hai. So tell me the value for Lyman. Lyman ki series limit ki wavelength kitni hogi? Or Lyman ki first line ki wavelength kitni. Give me the answer in terms of R. Do this calculation. What will be the value of series limit for Lyman in case of hydrogen? Answer should be in terms of R. 1 by R. 1 by R. Sure. Yes. So it will be 1 by R. Why? Why 1 by R? Because you are coming from infinity and you are coming to 1. So n initial is infinity and n final is 1. So what is the formula we studied? 1 by lambda equals to R 1 by n final square minus 1 by n initial square. So if you see 1 by lambda equals to R 1 by n final is 1 and this will be 1 by infinity will be 0. So lambda will be 1 by R. Okay, good. Very good. What about first line? 4 by 3R. 4 by 3, 4, R is, so 4 R by 3, right? 4 R by 3. Sorry, no, no. 4 by 3 R, yeah. R will be in the denominator. Yes. So why is it? Because first line is from 2 to 1. So again, using the same formula, R, what is N final? N final is 1. This is 1 by 4. So this is basically 3 R by 4. So 1 by lambda. So lambda will be basically 4 by 3 R. Okay. So now your homework is to find these things for Balmer, Paschen, Bracket, P fund for all of them. Find the series limit, find the first line. Okay. And then basically you draw a line. Then you try to draw a line and you start from origin. And then you say, okay, this is my uh, Lyman's series limit, basically 1 by R. Then I go to 4 by 3 R. Okay. 4 by 3 R. Then I go to this, 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 this. And then you see how the spacing between the series are changing. 
are the equidistant series is are equidistant because you see what is a, what is the what is the width of this series what width of this series 4 by 3 r minus 1 by r what will be that what will be that r 1 by 3 r similarly find the width of the balmer series similarly find the width of the pastern series and then see that how the widths of the series is changing how the distances between the two two of the series is changing that will give you many physical insights and try to make a comment on it that why the width of the series is increasing or decreasing and if it is not increasing decreasing remaining same why it is remaining same on what parameters the width of the series will depend so these are the questions if you try to answer this that will be very very brilliant actually okay so this is the case now another thing this is basically trick trick we use so this is basically the trick so now let's say you have your like atom at n equals to 4 right n equals to 4 and you have energy levels n equals to 3 or, or let's start with easy n equals to 3 and you have like this so your atom is at n equals to 3 so how many how many radiations it can emit how many radiations it can emit two. it is at n equals to 3 how many radiations it can emit yes sir two two why because 3 to 2 it can jump or 3 to 1 so it can jump from 3 to 2 or 3 to 1 but it cannot yeah. happen that it jump first from 3 to 2 and then it jumps from 2 to 1 Okay, uh, one, two, three. one, right? So the what do you think? So total radiations it can emit is three, because one can be it can come from three to two. Another is it can come from three to one, or is it possible that it can come from come to two first and then it can come from two to one? So basically three radiations it can emit. So in general uh, the formula is n into n minus one by two. Okay, and if you put n as three, you will get three into three minus one by two, which is basically six by two, which is three, and that is exactly what you got. So if I give you an uh, give you the question that initially your atom was at n equals to four, then how many radiations it can emit? Now you use the formula and let me. What do you think? Yes, sir, six. Six. Everyone getting six because n is four by two, which will be six. Now we can try to draw this. This will be three. This will be two. One. So one is four to this. 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 These will be three. What else? Three to this. Three to that. Then what else? One will be this. So total six uh, radiations it can commit. So this formula is directly used many times. Um, excuse me, sir. I, I think uh, you included the same thing twice here. Which one? Four to four to four to three. Ah, uh, sorry. I think it is two to one extra. Ah, uh, what what else is left? Then I think this two this one. two to one is left. Okay, sure, sure. So six six will be possible. Okay, okay. So these are the formulas. Now I am sharing one notes with you. one notes with you uh this is basically handwritten notes but that is printed notes and those notes contain all the information in a formula base or concise form you read those formulas you keep those no formulas in your mind and on monday i am only going to do the problems today i spent i took the entire problem session into lecture but on monday what i will do is for two complete hours i will take the problems of the atomic physics so whatever learned we learn today we will execute you already know that lectures are on four days monday tuesday thursday and friday okay so now our next lecture is on uh, on monday and on monday we are just going to solve the problems of this but weekend homework is very important as long as you don't have weekend homework uh, until unless it's wrong first of all you have to read the rajkumar book chapter number 2 okay and don't read it unnecessarily whatever i have taught stay close to it for example don't read sommerfeld model okay uh, some some isotropic things and all other things are there i will i will discuss those in, when i am discussing the problems 
okay because that will make more sense when you are discussing the problem that what is an isotope effect and all of that but what basic you have you can recap that or you can read the notes maybe rajkumar also you can skip if you want but one reading it will be good second uh, this homework is for my students for so whoever is enrolled in the course so for you all you have to make sure that this weekend at least you give two quizzes right as i already mentioned you have to give at least two quizzes and this is a good time to cover your foundation physics classes if something is left vector algebra will be definitely done for every one of you and one more mathematical topic if you complete will be very good I, all the lectures are already available with you so at least cover two quizzes because you already know that in one month you at least have to cover five to eight quizzes based on which your student report will be made so until as you're not doing five to eight quizzes in a month uh, according to me you are not doing anything so i will be taking look at your quizzes we will be having talk, talk about your quizzes and that's very important so entire performance of yours will be decided based on that how many quizzes you are giving okay so at least try to quiz one to two quizzes every weekend okay so that's your homework basically and these quizzes can be from foundation physics or from the mathematics whatever uh, you are doing right now. Okay. sir i have one so question I will my session here. yeah I will just end my session here. Now you can come with any.